Hi, this is Scott Morse from Woody Cabinets Tips and Tricks. This is part three on formatting the five piece door breakdown that eCabinets generates when you export their cut list into Excel. Today we're going to be working with the door name. We're going to be separating the height and the width from the actual door name and putting them into their own columns. We're also going to get rid of the extra text in the door name, leaving just door or drawer front. So let's get started. I'm going to start out by inserting a couple of columns. And those columns I want to be right after B. So I'm going to say ddump.range. And I'm going to say columns C and D. So I've got C colon D. I'm going to say dot columns, dot insert. And if I hit my run button, you'll see two new columns go right where we want them. Now the next thing I need to do is separate the width using text to columns. And I'm just simply going to grab my code up here that we use for our cabinet number, my text to columns code there. I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. And I want to change my range to B. And my destination range, I'm going to change it to B also. Now, the other char here, I need to make sure that that is lowercase x. And what that's going to do is separate this column by that x there. It's going to put the width in column C. So I'm going to go ahead and run that code. And you can see that we indeed have it in column C there. And what I need to do is cut and paste that in column D. And that's pretty simple. I'm just going to say ddump.range, the entire column C there, dot cut, and type the word destination followed by colon and equals. And I'm going to tell the destination to be ddump.range column D. Now, what I need to do next is go ahead and put the column header in column D. So I'm just going to grab this right here, copy it and paste it right there, and change my range to be D1. And just say equals, quotes, and whatever I want to be in that header. Just make sure it's surrounded by quotes. Now when I run my code, you should see all that happen. And there it is. We got D width and then R widths in that column. Now the next thing we need to do is extract the heights from the door name. And we're going to use a for next loop along with the end string reverse function and place them in column C. We're also going to remove any unwanted text from the door name, leaving just door or drawer front. Now I've got some variables declared here. I've got dim POS1 as integer. POS2 as integer, DHT as string, and DName as string. Now position 1 is what we're going to use to hold to the position of the double spaces that we find in this string of text. And position 2 is going to hold the single, the position of the single space in this string of text. And of course, DHT is going to be our door height, and D name is going to be the actual door name. So let's get started with our for next loop. And I've already got that started. It's just simply for x equals to our variable here for our last row in our raw data, dpt raw dat lr. And then down here, after all these notes, I've got next x. So the first thing I need to do is find that position of those double spaces and put it in our variable position 1. So I'm going to say POS1 equals, and then I-N-S-T-R-R-E-V, parentheses, and it wants to know what string to check in. And that's going to be the string of text in column B on the row that we're on in our loop. So I'm going to say dump.range, parentheses, and we're going to be looking in column B, so quotes B, in quotes, and then in our variable X for the row that we're on in our loop. So I need ampersand and that X there. Close parentheses. Now, when I hit comma, it's wanting to know what string to match. And I'm going to need quotes and then whatever string I want to match, which in our case is two spaces. So space, space, in quotes. And that's all we need. Just hit close parentheses. And I'm going to put a stop marker right there. Run my code up to that point. If I hover over this right now, it's 0. When I hit F8, you should see 15. And there it is. So that's working. So I'm going to reset my code. 
and get rid of my stop marker and now we need to trap the actual height in the variable DHT and we're going to use the mid function I'm going to say DHT equals mid parentheses and it needs to know the string which is going to be ddump dot range column B and the row that we're on in our loop now when I hit comma it's wanting to know where to start at we're going to start at position 1 so I'm going to say POS 1 that's going to start at position 15 now what I want to do is eliminate the double spaces so I'm going to add two more positions to whatever's in this variable here so I'm going to say plus 2 and then close parentheses put a stop marker right here and we should see 21 come up in this variable here I'm going to run it run my code right now it's blank if I hit F8 you see we've got 21 if you look real close there's actually a space after the one so we're going to get rid of that in just a second what we're going to do is we're going to insert whatever's in this variable here into column C and we're going to use the trim function to get rid of the leading and trailing spaces that might be in that string that we just put in our door height I'm going to say ddump dot range again this time it's going to be C ampersand x equals trim okay now the, in the last video we used application dot worksheet function dot trim well VBA actually has a native function called trim so you don't necessarily have to use the worksheet function trim you can if you want to it's just entirely up to you I'm gonna hit parentheses and it's wanting to know the string to trim which is going to be d height DHT close parentheses if I got everything correct when I run my code you should see 21 go right here in column C so I'm gonna hit F8 and there it is I'm gonna go ahead and reset my code get rid of my stop marker and what we need to do next is remove that door height from the string of text that's in the door name here and I'm going to use the replace method to do that so I'm going to say ddump dot range and that's going to be column B and the row that we're on in our loop and I'm going to say dot replace now when I hit space I need to type the word what colon and equals and I need to tell it what to replace and that is going to be our variable DHT now I'm going to hit comma and I need to type the word replacement colon and equals and we need to tell it what to replace it with and that's going to be nothing okay double quotes double quotes comma and we need to tell it what to look at so look at that is one word colon and equals and this is going to be XL part and that should take care of that so I'm put my stop marker right there and run my code and we should see this 21 go away and there it is so that's working now the next thing we need to do is use the in string function up here we used in string reverse right here we have got to use the in string we can't go from the end of our text because if we do when we get to this drawer front here we're looking for a single space so it's going to find this first this single space and we don't want that so we're going to use the in string function and I'm just simply going to copy my code where we use the in string reverse and paste it right here and change my variable to position 2 and get rid of the REV which leaves us with INSTR the range is the same the criteria now is going to be a single space so the next thing we need to do is use the mid function to trap that so I'm going to come right here and grab this line of code when we did the mid function control C and control V I'm going to change my variable from D height to D name and my range is going to be the same change my variable POS 1 to POS 2 and the number of positions we want to add from 2 to 1 and that's going to get rid of that space now we can just put that right back into the same cell that it came from 
So I'm going to say D dump dot range B ampersand X equals trim D name and close parentheses. So let's see what happens when I run that. And F8, you should see just door right there. And that's working. We don't have any spaces. Now, I'm going to go ahead and reset my code. What we need to do next after we get done looping through all of this is put the text D height or D underscore height into cell C1. So that's simply going to be D dump dot range C1 and equals D underscore height. Now, we want to format these two new columns here to numbers. Now, if you're using decimals, you can format it to be decimals up to ever how many decimal places you want. Same way with metric. I'm using fractions so I want mine to be fractions up to two digits so I'm going to say D dump dot range columns C1 and column D all the way to the last row in our data set so I got C1 colon D ampersand and my variable for the last row in our raw data and I'm going to say dot number format equals quotes and pound sign space question mark question mark slash question mark question mark now the last couple of things we need to do is I want to make sure that there is no text wrapped in in, in the range of our data set here our raw data and also want to auto fit all of these columns so I'm going to say ddump dot use range dot columns dot wrap text equals false and I'm just going to copy that paste it right there and I'm going to say dot columns dot auto fit and that should do it what I want to do now is I want to test out my code I want to make sure that this for next loop has not created an infinite loop so I'm going to put a stop marker right here and a stop marker right there. I'm going to go ahead and run my code up to the point where we start our for next loop. I can remove that stop marker and now I can come over here and I want to check it out till we get to our drawer front right here to make sure that's working. I'm going to hit F5 on my keyboard which is going to take us to our next X. And it's going to go all the way through that and everything's looking good when I get right here all that looks good now I want to come down here to the bottom of my range and I want to make sure when I get right here on row 228 I stop hitting my F5 key and hit my F8 key that way if I'm in an infinite loop I'll know I'm just going to hold down my F5 key if I hover over my X right here I can see what row I'm on and you can see right now that's 78 so just keep holding it down until you start to see things happen over here okay you can see right now we're in almost to the end I'm gonna hit F5 I want to make sure I stop right here on 228 I'm gonna remove this stop marker and hit F8 this will go through this now when I hit F8 again if it jumps back up here that means we got problems and it didn't so all oh, that's working that's working we see it auto fitting and all that looks good I want to check this code out one more time on a different worksheet just to make sure that everything's working properly so I'm going to delete everything in here I'm going to go to my home tab and I'm going to click on my button come back into our data dump and there it is so that'll wrap it up for this video I hope this video helped you out if it did how about give me a thumbs up in the next video we're going to be using the advanced filter unique records only to condense down this raw data to as few rows as possible we're also going to be using the sum ifs function in VBA to total up all the quantities of these different components so be sure you stay tuned for that video and hey if you haven't subscribed to my channel be sure to subscribe so you can get all my latest tips and tricks. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.